Section three of Complete Hypnotism. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Stuart Bell. Complete Hypnotism Mesmerism, Mind Reading, and Spiritualism by A. Alpheus. Theories of Hypnotism. We have now learned some facts in regard to hypnotism, but they leave the subject still a mystery. Other facts which will be developed in the course of this book will only deepen the mystery. We will therefore state some of the best known theories. Before doing so, however, it would be well to state concisely just what seems to happen in a case of hypnotism. The word hypnotism means sleep and the definition of hypnotism implies artificially produced sleep sometimes this sleep is deep and lasting and the patient is totally insensible but the interesting phase of the condition is that in certain stages the patient is only partially asleep while the other part of his brain is awake and very active it is well known that one part of the brain may be affected without affecting the other parts in hemiplegia, for instance, one half of the nervous system is paralyzed, while the other half is all right. In the stages of hypnotism we will now consider, the will portion of the brain or mind seems to be put to sleep, while the other faculties are abnormally awake. Some explain this by supposing that the blood is driven out of one portion of the brain and driven into other portions. In any case, it is as though the human engine were uncoupled and the patient becomes an automaton. If he is told to do this, that, or the other, he does it, simply because his will is asleep, and suggestion, as it's called from without, makes him act just as he starts up unconsciously in his ordinary sleep if tickled with a straw. Now for the theories. There are three leading theories, known as that of 1. Animal Magnetism, two neurosis and three suggestion we will simply state them briefly in order without discussion animal magnetism this is the theory offered by mesmer and those who hold it assume that the hypnotizer exercises a force independently of suggestion over the subject they believe one part of the body to be charged separately or that the whole body may be filled with magnetism they recognize the power of suggestion but they do not believe it to be the principal factor in the production of the hypnotic state those who hold this theory today distinguish between the phenomena produced by magnetism and those produced by physical means or simple suggestion the neurosis theory we have already explained the word neurosis but we repeat here the definition given by dr j r cock a neurosis is any affection of the nervous centers occurring without any material agent producing it without inflammation or any other constant structural change which can be detected in the nervous centers as will be seen from the definition any abnormal manifestation of the nervous system of whose cause we know practically nothing is for convenience termed a neurosis if a man has a certain habit or trick it is termed a neurosis or neuropathic habit one man of my acquaintance, who is a professor in a college, always begins his lecture by first sneezing and then pulling at his nose. Many forms of tremor are called neurosis. Now, to say that hypnotism is the result of a neurosis simply means that a person's nervous system is susceptible to this condition, which, by Monsieur Charcot and his followers, is regarded as abnormal. In short, Monsieur Charcot places hypnotism in the same category of nervous affections in which hysteria, and finally hallucination, medically considered, are to be classed, that is to say, as a nervous weakness, not to say a disease. According to this theory, a person whose nervous system is perfectly healthy could not be hypnotized. So many people can be hypnotized because nearly all the world is more or less insane, as a certain great writer has observed suggestion this theory is based on the power of mind over the body as we observe it in everyday life again let me quote from dr cock if we can direct the subject's whole attention to the belief that such an effect as before mentioned that his arm will be paralyzed for instance will take place 
that effect will gradually occur. Such a result having been once produced, the subject's willpower and power of resistance are considerably weakened, because he is much more inclined than at first to believe the hypnotizer's assertion. This is generally the first step in the process of hypnosis. The method pursued at the school of Nancy is to convince the subject that his eyes are closing by directing his attention to that effect as strongly as possible. However, it is not necessary that we begin with the eyes. According to Monsieur de Soir, any member of the body will answer as well. The theory of suggestion is maintained by the medical school attached to the hospital at Nancy. The theory of neurosis was originally put forth as the result of experiments by Dr. Charcot at the Salpatria Hospital in Paris, which is now the co-called Salpatria School, that is the medical school connected with the Salpatria Hospital. And there is also another theory put forth, or rather a modification of Professor Charcot's theory, and maintained by the school of the Charity Hospital in Paris, headed by Dr. Luis to the effect that the physical magnet and electricity may affect persons in the hypnotic state and that certain drugs in sealed tubes placed upon the patient's neck during the condition of hypnosis will produce the same effects which those drugs would produce if taken internally or as the nature of the drugs would seem to call for if imbibed in a more complete fashion this school however has been considerably discredited and Dr. Lewis's conclusions are not received by scientific students of hypnotism. It is also stated, and the present writer has seen no effective denial, that hypnotism may be produced by pressing with the fingers upon certain points in the body known as hypnogenic spots. It will be seen that these three theories stated above are greatly at variance with each other. The student of hypnotism will have to form a conclusion for himself as he investigates the facts. Possibly it will be found that the true theory is a combination of all three of those described above. Hypnotism is certainly a complicated phenomena, and he would be a rash man who should try to explain it in a sentence or in a paragraph. An entire book proves a very limited space for doing it. End of section 3 Recording by Stuart Bell, Cambridge, UK.